Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So today I'm going to explain to you about contract costing. So basically at the end of this chapter, you should be able to describe contract costing with examples. And then you need to be able to differentiate the characteristics of contract costing that compared to job or process costing. Next, you need to be able to explain the contract costing terms. You need uh, you also need to be able to con uh, construct the construction in progress account. Then you need, be, uh, you need to be able to calculate the recognized revenue. So uh, calculation of the recognized revenue based on two methods. One is the input method and the other one is output method. Next, you need to be able to calculate whether the contract results in a contract asset or contract liability. Next, you need to be able to prepare the statement of financial position the extract of the statement of financial positions and then uh, you need to be able to prepare the progress building account as well as the account receivable okay next we move on to the costing methods so costing method is basically the approach used to determine the amount of economic resources or the value used uh, in producing a product or when you provide a service so it's either you produce a product or you pro provide a service. You, you look at the costing method. So costing method is basically you want to determine how much is the cost. So uh, generally, there are two broad categories of costing method. One is known as the specific order costing and the other one is the continuous operation costing. This is just a revision based on what you have done before. Okay, specific order costing, according to SEMA, uh, this is the basic cost accounting method applicable where the work consists of separately identifiable contracts, jobs or patches. On the other hand, you will have the continuous operation costing. So continuous operation costing is the costing method applicable where goods uh, and services result from a sequence of continuous or repetitive operation processes. Then, when you want to calculate the cost, the costs are averaged over the unit produced. So, being initially charged to the operation or process. For example, if you, you incur cost of uh, 10 ringgit to produce 10 units, so 10 ringgit divided by 10 units, so the cost or the average cost is one ringgit per unit. So to, uh, to look at this in more detail, so uh, you can see in this diagram, you will have the costing method just now. The costing methods uh, can be divided into two. One is known as this specific order costing and the other one is the continuous operation costing. So if you look at this specific order costing, specific order costing, you have job costing, batch costing and contract costing. Remember just now we mentioned that is the basic cost accounting method where work consists of separately, you can identify it separately whether it is a job, whether it is a batch or whether it is a contract. And I believe you have already covered jobs and batches during your uh, previous semester. So for our topic today, that will be a contract costing. So just to recap, just to refresh your memory, basically what is job costing? So job costing, this one, okay, uh, job costing. So job costing is a form of specific order costing. So uh, job costing, we know it is a form of specific order costing, which applies where work is undertaken to customer's special requirements. Okay, that is based on the customer's special requirement. And each order is of comparatively short duration. Why, when you compare, that means compare between job, batch and contract. So normally contract takes a longer duration to complete as compared to your job costing. So what is basically a job costing? So job is carried out to produce a product. It's either you produce a product or you render a service. So to meet the requirement of the order or your customer special requirement. That is based on the order or the demand from your customer. Okay, uh, for example... Uh, you uh, you are producing, uh, you are making a kitchen cabinet. So if you are making a kitchen cabinet, that is based on the uh, customer's demand, based on the design by the, uh, demanded by the customer. So that is based on the, uh, that if that is the kind of work that you are doing, most likely you will be applying job costing to determine how much is the cost of your product. Okay. 
Uh, and then if you, for example, if you provide a services, you are rendering a service, maybe for example, you open up a workshop, you repair, you repair cars, for example, automobiles, you repair car, and then you want to know how much is the cost of the repair. You are not selling the car, but you are repairing the car. So that is, uh, if that is the service or that is the product that you produce or the service that you give, then uh, job costing is more appropriate to be used in that situation. So all these things is basically if you want to know how much is the cost, you want to ascertain the cost. You want to ascertain the cost that depends on the nature of the product, depends on the uh, type of the product or service that you provide. Okay, so for job costing, the work is usually carried out within a factory or a workshop. And that job is normally differ one from the other. For example, if you provide a uh, you provide a product, yeah, you you make a product. So the design for uh, house A, the design for kitchen cabinet for house A will be different from the design for kitchen cabinet in house B. So it depends on the demand by the customers. The same goes if you are repairing a car, for example. The uh, the things that you are doing for car A will be different from car B, and so on. Okay, and then individual jobs are given a unique job number. So you identify that based on a job number, for example, job uh, BX123. Okay, and then you identify the cost and then you accumulate the cost based on each job or each order that you receive. So you calculate the cost. Cost will include the, all the elements of cost, for example, the material, the labor. So that means the material that you use to, uh, to uh, the material that you you use for that particular job or for that particular product then you add with the labor how much is the labor cost how much is the overhead if you have any specific expenses so you add all those in a job cost sheet okay and then job costing is used for example as i said in the printing job furniture making automobile servicing uh, servicing etc so this is where you apply the job costing technique okay next you have the batch costing just now so batch costing is that form of specific order costing which applies where similar articles are manufactured in batches either for sale or for use within the undertaking it's basically kind of a job costing but then you are producing in batches instead of you producing in a singular form you produce in batches so a batch is a group of similar articles and is treated as a cost unit you consider that all that batch as a cost unit so it's very similar to job costing just that the items that you, that you produce are in batches how are you going to calculate the cost cost per unit in a batch is calculated as the total batch cost divided by the number of units in that particular batch okay so that is basically we have looked at this specific order costing you have looked into the job costing you have looked into batch costing Next, today we're going to continue. I'm going to explain to you about contract costing. So, uh, that's the end of the first part of our uh, video for today.